Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, striving for a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. And we are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. My special guest today is a fantastic man with great character. He's the CEO of Energy Optimization Services, and his company is a huge positive game changer for many businesses and schools here in Hawaii and across the United States. He is Kale Flag, and today we are going beyond energy savings. Hey, Kale. How's it, man? Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Well, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Pretty excited. I'm a big fan of your show. Well, thank you. You're a local boy. You went to Iolani School. How was your experience at Iolani? Iolani was great. It was, uh, it was challenging. Um, it was transforming. And I made a lot of lifetime friends there. Um, and it just it, it created the character and the work ethic that I've used for my whole life. So it was, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Was and, attending Iolani. and you did wrestling. Yeah. I wrestled from seventh grade um, through senior year. Um, it was one of the things that helped me get into college um, was my wrestling success at Iolani. I also did a little water polo and a little pole vaulting, but mostly I was a wrestler who did water polo and pole <laughs> vaulting. I was just, you know, Coach Schroers, who ended up being the athletic director there. Um, he had a phenomenal program and it was fun to be part of it. And then what college did you end up going to, Kale? I got accepted in, and I matriculated from uh, uh, Yale University. Um, I got a degree in economics and also uh, um, a, a major in political science as well. So I like to ask this question to a lot of my guests. Yeah. What was your first job that you ever had? My first job was uh, a paper route. I was in um, sixth grade. I was attending Cocoa Head Elementary at the time. And uh, um, so every morning, it was, it was the AM route. So it was 4.15. I had probably about 160 um, customers. And so I'd fold all the papers, put it into the bag, put it on the, my bicycle, and then go down those super scary dark alleys on Portlock Road from the main street down to the ocean of dark dogs barking. And, it was, and then we had to go collect money. It was, it was good fun. <laughs> That's was, tough work. It's not easy, huh? No, it was, yeah, and your hands are in black, but it was good money. You know, yeah. it was a, I think we made like 100 bucks, 120 bucks a week or something like that. So when you're in sixth grade, you know, <laughs> that's a big deal. Kale, you have a beautiful family. And your wife is a local girl, too. Yeah, Edwina is uh, um, the oldest of 11 children. Wow. Um, and uh, she went to Kamehameha. Yep. Um, so she's a local girl. And uh, uh, so we have four children together. We're very blessed. And our four children have 42 first cousins here in the state of Hawaii. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's huge. No, that's awesome. It's just, <laughs> there's nothing better than Ohana. You know? Well, and then it's great that you moved back to Hawaii now, and I hear that your dog is on its way back, and you love your dog. Oh, yeah, he's my best buddy. So my dog's name is Kohala, and he's a yellow lab. Yeah. And uh, so I get to go on where I live up in Tahoe. So Edwin and I, we raised our kids on the mainland, and our youngest one, Kalama, he graduated from high school just this past year. Um, he's on the East Coast now. So we've been empty nesters for about two and a half months. <laughs> um, so we moved back to Hawaii. We just got a place out in Kulio. Um, and uh, so my dog is actually arriving the day after tomorrow, which I'm pretty excited about because uh, I take daily walks with him in the mainland. We do about a three and a half mile loop every day in the mountains um, in Lake Tahoe. And uh, so it just shows the permanence that I get to bring him over. You know, yeah, it's well, pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> now, fun. Holly, what was what is your professional background? Um, the best way to describe it is, is I'm an entrepreneur. Yep. Um, since the day I graduated, I washed dishes in college. That was, that was the last time I got a W-2 yeah. from a company I didn't own. So I've had some of my own companies give me W-2s, but <laughs> I never worked for a company that I didn't at least partially own. And I've never owned 100% of the company. So I'm a big team guy. I've always had partners, but I've been in uh, sales and real estate development um, and COO services um, for the last 30 years now. So energy optimization services, yes. okay. what, what does EOS do? Really simply, we use technology to reduce the energy spend of our customers. As simple as that. 
One of the beautiful things about our business model is we can bring 100% of the capital to the table. So using a simple analogy, we go, we, they, they, our customers can finance themselves. They don't need to do it through us. But if they do it through us, for $30 of monthly technology, we can give them $100 of savings Wow! every single time. We don't propose strategies. We don't propose upgrades unless we can, for this much money, $30 a month, give them $100 of savings. And our average project size is between $200,000 and $250,000. And uh, um, our average savings is seven figures. Sometimes we hit eight figures. Um, so we can save companies millions of dollars um, and it's cash flow positive, meaning um, that they take their current expense and we can lower it this much. And even if we come up with all the money for the upgrade, it's this much more to pay for it. So they've actually saved this much money. So that's our business model. We use technology to save customers money on their energy spend. Do you manufacture your own product? We manufacture our own LED lights. Okay. Um, so we're not a lighting company only, but we start with lighting because it's the low hanging fruit. Our technology can save between 70 to 80% of what uh, our commercial customers are spending on their energy or two, three times more light. Yeah. So the aesthetics, um, the, the facility looks so much better and it pops. The thing about LED light is it's the same wavelength as the sun. So it makes the fruit pop, it makes the colors pop, it makes everything look better, but we're using 80% less energy for more light, more controllable light. Um, so we're an OEM, we're an original equipment manufacturer. We, we are component-driven manufacturer. We buy components from Nietzsche, we buy components from, from uh, um, Meanwell, we buy components from um, Philips, for example. We buy components from different manufacturers, we put them together and we bring them directly to the customer. Yes, um, I yeah. love that, I love well, that. It's the beauty of the model, it's, it's, we didn't invent the model. I like to say that our manufacturing model is like Apple Computer. Um, they are component driven as well. They buy components from different people and put it together. That's our model. Our delivery model is a lot like Uber or uh, Lyft um, or Airbnb, yeah. meaning we go directly to the customer. So the, the result for our customers is we're usually 30, 40% cheaper than our competitors. We're also one, two, sometimes three generations of technology ahead of our competitors. Um, and the reason for that is because our competitors, the way that they do is they come in uh, to the facility, they do an analysis, an assessment, and then they go, okay, then they go to the local electrical supply company, they go, this is what we're gonna put in there, they put their labor on it, they mark up the product by maybe 20%, and that's their bid. But when we come to our customer, we don't have that national distributor, that regional distributor, that local distributor, we don't have all those markups, so we're selling to our customer for, for less money than that electrical contractor is buying from the electrical supply house. We actually supply to some electrical supply houses. So we are delivering for less expense, but it's, high, it's better technology. Um, it's more advanced technology. Again, sometimes one, two, three generations ahead, and we've seen it be up to two years of, generate, of technology ahead. And it's not because we're the smartest people in the room, it's because of our model. Yeah. So they've got to sell all their 17s in the warehouse, all their 18s, all their 19s. So when new technology comes, it could be a year, year and a half before their customers can have it. For us, if new technology, um, when Meanwhile goes from version seven to version eight, when Nietzsche goes from version six to version seven, that can be in our next order, our next production run, and our customer gets it right away. Wow, no, I've sat in some meetings with you, uh, with some CEOs and GMs, and it's amazing. I mean, it's a win, 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 win situation. There's no catch what, whatsoever. Yeah, the, the, this model was developed by my business partner, um, this OEM model, his name is Ted Dutcher. Um, he was actually a two-time US Olympian. Um, and he also played professional baseball. And then he had like a 27 year career on Wall Street as a national sales manager um, for some pension funds. And uh, they call it, in that business, they call it AUM, assets under management. He did, I think, something like $7, billions of, $7 billion in sales and asset under management. And what he found out on Wall Street is sometimes the biggest ones, the biggest companies weren't, didn't perform best. It was the ones with the most versatility on the bottom that could move to get better return. When he looked at the LED model, um, he realized that our opportunity was they had this existing distribution system that everybody's used in America and worldwide for 100 years, all the same names, right? It's the GEs, the Philips, the Sylvanias. Um, we make our stuff with the same um, components, but we use the best components, not only our components. Um, and so he developed that, that uh, uh, go-to-market strategy, um, and the result has been phenomenal. We've gotten 
I mean, Oracle is a customer of ours. Uh, Pepsi is a customer of ours. We've had uh, uh, Alliance Data, which is card services. We've had uh, United Technologies. Um, Huge companies. Yeah, big companies. Because And what they see is it boils down to the technology, and it boils down to our ability to deliver it directly, so better or less. Kale. You know, I mean, you guys. I mean, you guys are so reputable with so many of these huge companies, like you mentioned. Locally, you've helped the Kolani Condo and some some others. I want to show a video of what your company does and how they help the Kolani Condo. Cool. Ali, that's an amazing video. I mean, you're saving them $121,000 a year, and you just did their parking structure and the stairwell. Exactly. And then we, we're, we're talking to them now about doing all of the floors in their building. I think there's something like 45 floors or something yeah. like that, and the rest of their common area. What's amazing about this technology is that, yeah, we're saving $121,000, but you can tell by the aesthetics, there's more light, there's better light. It fills the space better. So it's actually better aesthetics for 70, 80% less energy output. And that's what's so cool about this. You're, you're reducing the carbon footprint in a huge way, right? Yeah. So we like to say, as you mentioned earlier, there's four wins here. The first win is for the environment. The reason that we're saving $121,000 a year is because instead of using this much energy, they're using this much energy. Yeah. So it just benefits the planet. The second thing is it's positive cash flow for the consumer. So they're spending less money. So the environment wins, the customer wins, and we hire people to do these construction projects, right? So now we have people that are working that are getting jobs. Local. Local. Yep. Always local. Um, and then in addition, uh, we make a profit. So the, the, the environment wins, the customer wins, laborers are getting more work, and we're, we're profitable as well. And we have people working for our company. So it's a win, 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 win. And uh, you feel really good about that kind of stuff that helps the environment at the same time. And Kale, I know that you have a passion for helping people, and you've done a ton of schools as well. And I learned that, you know, your lighting, I mean, there's different levels of LED lighting. I mean, it's just not, oh, I have LED lighting. There's different levels and you have superior LED lighting and that lighting actually reduces hyperactivity in students and increases productivity and learning with students and teachers. Yes. That's, what's, that's another really cool thing about what we're doing. So it starts with the economics. It starts with, hey, we can cut 80%, 70 to 80% of what you're spending on lighting. That's where it starts. But there's all these cool additional benefits that are just amazing. We've done a bunch of school districts in Colorado and California. Um, and what happens is there's, there's, there's something called human-centric lighting. Human-centric lighting, basically, if you go back to the caveman days, um, people would wake up in the morning. It's kind of a yellow light, right, when the, when the sun rises. And yep. then it gets to high noon, and then it kind of mellows out at the end of the day. And what happens is your body reacts to that um, based upon the color and based upon the mood. Well, today, with all of our artificial lighting, you know, people up in Alaska, they're getting no light. They need these, these <laughs> lamps to keep them healthy, right, to get their melatonin going. So our lights, with the controls that we have for them, are designed to mirror that human-centric lighting. One of the things, let me get specific, one of the things for our schools is we have something called CCT technology, which is color control temperature, 
and also step down, up and down, step down dimming. So we've been able to give our, our teachers in each one of their classes an app, and they can change the color and the intensity of the light based upon their students. So for example, first thing in the morning and everybody's kind of tired, they might not want to shock them awake, but an hour in, they might want to make it more intense so the kids wake up, or right around exam time, they might want to make it more intense. But maybe right after recess, when everybody's hyped down, hyped out, they can bring it back down. So we've had a lot of teachers that love the ability on their app to control the color from real yellow to real white and the intensity from real intense to more um, um, to less intense for their students. Um, and there's been white papers done, medical white papers that talk about this type of, uh, of light has a tremendous impact, not just in schools, but in offices as well, for the well-being of their students. Again, this is a killer cool side benefit. Yeah. We start with save so much money, but the fact that, for example, kids on the spectrum and even all of us, uh, every single person on the planet, um, when you have lights can really impact your physiology. So the way that uh, your, your flight or, or, or fight kind of mentality, also the flickers. A lot of the old fluorescent lights that can get headaches because of the flicker. When you have quality LEDs, you mentioned that all LEDs are not equal. That's so true. When you, we, we actually manufacture to a very, very high specification. We get third-party labs to test all of our stuff to make sure that the flicker rate is almost non-existent so that you don't have those negative effects, so that the color is really consistent. The last quality LEDs, for example, have a much higher variance of color differentiators. When you can get really fine-tuned into this quality of technology, the health benefits just add on to everything that you're getting <laughs> with the, so you can tell I'm pretty passionate yeah. about this. <laughs> But, but yeah. Kale, you know, I love your passion, and I mean, what you guys are doing is amazing. Okay? I mean, it, I mean, words can't explain, but let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond energy saving. Awesome. Thanks. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Kale Flag. We will be back in 60 seconds. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation. Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the CEO of Energy Optimization Services, and his company provides superior products while significantly reducing energy operational costs for many businesses and schools. He is Kale Flag, and today we are going beyond energy savings. Kale, you guys are more than just an LED lighting company, right? Absolutely. We focus on what's called energy conservation measures. And our business model is real simple. Our business model is that we, for this much money every month, you can save this much. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's po positive cash flows. So we start with the LEDs because it's the lowest hanging fruit. But then we have HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, air conditioning that we can optimize. Um, we have uh, uh, batteries that we can curb um, demand costs. Um, we go into cogen. We go into solar. There's other things involved. We start with that, and then we keep on coming back. Because as a CEO, if somebody said, hey, for $30, you can buy a $100 bill. For $30 a month, you can get $100 of savings. How often would you want us to knock back on your door? <laughs> yeah. So that's our business model. For sure. And Hawaiian Electric Company and Hawaii Energy, they love you. We actually are partners with Hawaii Energy. They wow. have a program where they give incentives to our customers. So we work hand-in-hand. -hand. In fact, last week, we actually two weeks ago, we just did a... a, a presentation my partner Ted Dutcher um, did that was the featured speaker um, and yeah we partner with Hawaii Energy because they want 
um, their businesses to save money and cut energy as well. So we go hand in hand. They give incentives, but they need companies like us to actually do the work. So we, we're partners of, um, with Hawaii Energy, and we're very, we're very much enthused about their contribution to everything that's happening. I love hearing that. And you guys, you're, you're also a sponsor of the upcoming Hawaii Open this December 26th to 28th. Yeah, we're really excited about that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a wrestler. I've, I've never been a, a tennis player. I wish I was. Um, I think that the net is too close to the, my height, I think, is, is what the challenge is. I'm sure there's other challenges. But you know what? We're really excited to contribute to Hawaii yeah. and to give back. And I know there's, there's not, I don't know if there's any other professional events um, in Hawaii. Um, and to have world-class athletes like you brought to the table here. Um, Maria Sharapova and yeah. Kani Shikori, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's so great. And, and to be able to chance to meet with them and be able to have a chance to bring something like that that could grow into something worldwide famous for Hawaii, anything that we could do to help Hawaii, we're really excited about that. And you just met with uh, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green, and you're helping you know, his Kauhale project. Yeah, so we're really excited about that, too. The thing about... Homelessness is not just in Hawaii, but across the United States. Um, is I think we all maybe in the beginning, you know, when we're naive, we go, "Well, let's just get rid of them." Their answer is, "There is no just getting rid of them," you know. And there, but for the grace of God, go I. So you got to look at these people with compassion and realize that this is not something that they chose. They might say that they chose it, but they didn't. It ended up their their pride in who they are. But for us to be able to give, I really think, honestly, I really think that this strategy that the Lieutenant Governor is rolling out, along with money. Yep. Um, I think that their strategy of creating a community, I really think it could work oh, yeah. on these small homes. And so we're doing our part, you know, we're, we want, we're helping with the lighting, hopefully, and um, for, for, for the, their facilities and, and uh, HVAC, hopefully, and, and uh, whatever else we can do. I really believe in it. And, you know, if we could figure out a formula, it's not, there's not one thing that's going to solve everything. But if you can create these little communities where they want to be there, um, we can help them come back into society. Um, why wouldn't you do that? You know? It's a win-win. Win-win. Now, Holly, I know that you read my book, Beyond the Lines. Did you like it? Loved it. I've read um, a lot of books um, on self-help. Um, I've been an addict for self-help <laughs> um, really since, you know, probably um, since, since Iolani. You know, yeah. The idea of continuing to work on yourself my whole life. The thing about your book was it was very clear. It was very simple. It was very strategic. But it, was, it had a lot of wisdom in it. I really enjoyed it. It was a quick read, great stories. Um, and there was a lot of places. I learned a lot. Um, I always look at a book, if I can take one or two takeaways, that's huge. And I think in your book, I probably had seven or eight takeaways. Um, and I'm not just saying that because you're here. I've, <laughs> I've given your book to all of my partners in the company. Wow. Um, there's four partners at EOS. There's Ted Dutcher, who I mentioned before. There's Mark Oriel. There's Dan Williams and myself. And I gave it to all of them. And we've shared it with our spouses. Um, and uh, so I really believe, I love the idea of like having a goal and working backwards. I like the idea of like, it's not supposed to be easy. You know, you sh you, the four P's, you know, the, the, you just, there's so much in your book that I really enjoyed. Well, you're my promoter now. Okay. <laughs> so Kale, everyone defines success in different ways. How do you define success? To me, success is growth, not just of yourself, but of the people around you. So, I mean, you can go out and spend your whole life. I know people who spent their whole life, for example, chasing wealth. And now they have this huge wealth, but they don't talk to their kids. They don't talk to their family. Is that success? And then you have people that spend their whole time in their family, but they don't pay any attention to the financial. And all of a sudden, they have somebody who they love, and they can't take care of them with the medical help they need or care that they need at the end of their life. Is that success? So, to me, success has always been setting a goal, going after it, and getting it, and pulling people up with you. Um, and sometimes there's hard love is required for that type of success, yeah. not just soft love. And it's not an easy thing, but I've, I've dedicated my life so that when I meet my maker in heaven, he can say, hey, I gave you these gifts. You used them all. <laughs> I really want to be using them all, you know? So, Kale, so why are you successful? The first thing, and I, I don't mean this facetiously at all, the first thing is his luck, you know? Um, the, 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 the brain that God gave me, the discipline that God gave me, the people in my life that God gave me, starting from Iolani and then going into Yale and then my wife and then my family, my father, very successful. My mother who's always prioritized our family. 
So a lot of that I didn't have any control of, right? I mean, it's just the village that I was born into. So a lot of the success was luck. And then I had teachers that did practice hard love and said, listen, you're not entitled to this just because of what you're born. You've got to earn it. Um, and so and my, my dad, I remember when I was in second grade, um, our soccer team won the state championships, the Hawaii Kai Sharks. It was, and we were going to go over to the mainland. And uh, we all had to raise money to get ourselves over to the mainland. My dad said, okay, Clay, I'll pay for half, but you have to pay the other half. And I think I was in second grade, right? <laughs> so I had to, and so back then, it was like, that's so unfair. It's so unfair. But it made me so much more prideful. When I got onto that plane, you know, it's like the, the, those dollars that I contributed to the pot, my dad was smart enough to use hard love to say, hey, this is, we're not going to just give you it. We're going to not just give you fish. We're going to teach you how to fish. And so to me, I think that's why I had great teachers and, and mentors that I listened to. Yeah. No, I love hearing that. What's, what's a valuable lesson you learned in life? There's a lot, right? Um, one of the, I, I think one of the most valuable lessons is team, um, that uh, you can do a lot more as, as a team than with individuals, that ideas, they can come from anywhere, and you should listen, but that doesn't mean you have to listen and do everything that everybody else says. You've got to pick which ideas to use. Not all ideas are equal, right? Um, you can tell by where someone ends up, if you listen to their advice, where you're going to end up. So if somebody has a great family and you listen to them on family, a good chance you're going to end up with a great family. If, if they've been divorced four times and they're giving you fa uh, familial advice, you might want to think twice. So, <laughs> so um, I, I think the lesson is to listen and, and, and be aware of who you're listening to, who you're influenced to. Um, but, ide but to me, success is you take energy and ideas and you keep on increasing your energy and the quality of your ideas, and then that's, the, that's always been the formula I've used for success. I like it. Now, before we wrap, I want to ask you one more thing. What's the best advice you ever received? Well, when I got married, when I got engaged, actually, to be married, my father pulled me aside. And this is a guy um, who has been married since um, 1963, so that's 57 years now. And Edwin and I are going to be celebrating our 25th year anniversary this um, September of 2020. Um, the best advice that he gave me was when we, were getting, when we were planning the wedding, he said, listen, I'm going to give you three pieces of advice. The first one is that separate the marriage from the wedding. The wedding is just a party. Let her do whatever she wants. It's more important <laughs> to her. Let her plan a great party. But don't get involved, right? You, can help, you have to pay for it, but don't get too involved. That was the first piece of advice. The second one is don't go to sleep angry, right? If you're mad at each other, figure it out. And over the years, we haven't always like, you know, been perfect at that. You know? <laughs> um, but the third, I think, was the biggest one. He said, listen, if you want to have a happy marriage, date your wife. Date your wife your whole life. Act like you're still trying to win her. Act like you're still trying to win her hand and win her confidence. And I've used that not only in my marriage, but my business with our customers. I think that's the most important thing with customers. So often you make a sale, and then the relationship completely changes with this company that's been selling it. They try, they work in you, working, working work you, then you sign the check, and they never talk to you again. Our whole business model is a 20, 30-year um, relationship. That's what we want. We want to be there. So we give 10-year um, promises on all of our LED stuff, which includes labor. It's not prorated. We come and do annual State of the Union, so we're proactive. If we see something that's not working, we're going to fix it before it's even broken. Yeah. But our, our relationship, we, what we want is to be bringing technology that costs 30 bucks and gives you $100 of, of savings for the next 20, 30 years. And there's all kinds of new technology with the Internet of Things coming. So dating your customers, dating your wife, keep on, even after the sales happen, keep on trying to win them. I think that's the, the best advice I've ever been given. Holly, thank you for sharing your words of wisdom and your insights. And it's great that EOS is here in Hawaii now. You opened up a new office, and I think every business in school will you know, benefit hugely. We're excited, and thank you for having me on your show. I'm a big fan, and I'm looking forward to the Hawaii Open. Yeah. Thank you, Kale. Mahalo. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii, and a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Kale and I will inspire you to strive for your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.